Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we do our best to go through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try to understand what it is we can expect to happen in the prophetic end times, or the times Jesus referred to as the end of the age. And we've gone through Revelation verse by verse. If you haven't had a chance to go back and watch episodes one through current, I highly recommend you do. You'll definitely get a lot out of this episode, but it's a lot of the things we go through will make a lot more sense if you follow it verse by verse. Um, so with that being said, where we're at at this point is we've made it to chapter five. We just took a look and uh, spent a couple episodes looking around the throne room of God. Fascinating stuff going on there. And we are just getting ready to be introduced to the scroll with the seven seals. Now, before we get into the scroll with the seven seals, I just want to take a moment um, and just kind of wrap up the throne room of God real quick and bring up something. Uh, the oldest uh, book in the Bible is the book of Job. It's also, in my opinion, and I think other scholars would agree, I, I, I think it might be the oldest complete text on the planet of any kind. Um, and there's a part at the very beginning of Job and throughout Job where we get a glimpse into the throne room of God. So I just want to take a look at that. We're going to look for a second in Job 1, verses 6 and 7. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Now, I find that important because as we glimpsed into the throne room of God, it's important that we see certainly that Satan has some appearances in that throne room, as well as he is busy walking to and fro throughout the earth, walking all over it. So I just want to say that because as we get into the scroll, there's events um, you know, Satan, as we go through Revelation, Satan is in it. He is definitely in it, and we can't leave him out of it. As a matter of fact, he's going to play a pretty darn big role in this. Um, and there's events that occurred even around the world, even today, that he plays a role in, and that there's this spiritual war taking place over. So we have to see that as we look into... Um, what's about to happen in Revelation, humans cause much of what we will see in Revelation because they're being tormented by demons and whispered in their ear and, and led to do things. Um, and of course, God will cause many things to occur in Revelation. So it's important as we watch what's about to happen uh, in prophetic events that we keep those two things in mind. All right, with that being said, let's jump in. Now we're about to, we're getting our first glimpse at the scroll. So we looked around and we saw everybody worshiping God at the throne. And we're going to pick up in Revelation 5, verse 1. And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Now, I'm going to pause there for a second because I think it's very important that we understand what this is. Uh, before we get into uh, opening it and all that thing, what is this scroll? So, first off, we'll say that it's significantly sealed for an appointed time. Um, that's very important that we understand that. So there's a couple things we have to take a look at with this scroll. First of all, it is sealed seven times. Also, it has got some things written in it, and both those things are significant. Everything that God does in prophetic times is for the appointed time. There's always an appointed time. Sometimes it is ticks on a clock, but typically it's a culmination of events where everything lines up perfectly. So we're going to take a look. We've looked at this in episode two, but we're going to look at it again today. It's Habakkuk chapter two, where he says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it will speak and it will not lie. Now again, this is, he's not talking about ticks on a clock. What we're talking about is a culmination of events here. So if we look at Daniel, um, Daniel, at the very end of Daniel, and we read this also a few episodes ago, at the very end of Daniel, um, he's told to seal up a particular scroll. So he's, he's just been given this awesome prophecy, which I'd love to do a whole series on sometime, of these wars between the kings of the north and the south. 
and at the very end of it, we're kind of getting into things that have not happened yet. And what takes place here is an angel says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book and tell the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Now, there's a lot going on. So he was given a prophetic event that he wrote down. He wrote down what he saw. And then he's told, seal this up because it's not yet for the appointed time that there's an appointed time that this shall be broken and the seals shall be loosed. And what takes place here is um, a lot of people believe that this is that scroll. Now, I can say that from my knowledge, this is the only time in the Word of God where there is a scroll that is sealed for the appointed time. Um, so I, I think this is a very reasonable argument for that because what Daniel is going through is the end times and it's like, okay, now stop there, now seal it up. Um, and then he's given some more things regarding a timeline, which we definitely will come back to, but we're just going to stick with the scroll right now. So he's told to seal up this scroll. So I wanted to take a moment and just kind of look at, well, what is this scroll? So I, look, I, I like to look at what the actual words are. Um, the scrolls, uh, the word they use here is biblia. It's a papyrus roll or a roll is kind of what it means, a paper. Uh, it's also where we get the word Bible from. Um, and it's sealed with seven seals. Now, this speaks to its reality. Like, as those seals are broken, uh, reality occurs. And, and in order for God to lay out his prophetic events for the coming of a kingdom, things have to happen beforehand. Um, these are sealed for an appointed time. So as these seals are broken one by one, what's taking place is a culmination of events is playing out on the world to line up what's actually written in that scroll. So we have to be able to separate what happens when we break the seals and what happens when we actually read this scroll. So each break of that seal, um, what's taking place here is now keep in mind God is outside of time. So he is in control of when he breaks that seal. He is outside of time and each, as each seal breaks, an event occurs mostly caused by humans, not by God. Um, influenced by demons, of course, that will take place. So as, as these seals are broken, God's like, okay, here's this event that I saw playing out because I'm outside of time. And then as this seal is breaking, you know, here's this other event taking place, most of which God is not doing. He's just showing it. You know, I've seen this already because I live outside of time, but here's what, how it's going to play out. Um, so Satan is walking to and fro on the earth trying to prevent this, but in doing so, he's actually causing it to occur. Um, and then you'll also see as these seals are broken, angels fighting. There's a spiritual war that's taking place because there's a battle. Uh, Satan obviously does not want this prophecy revealed. He doesn't know it's in it either, either than his ability to read Revelation. So he's trying to prevent this from occurring. So what we'll see is we'll see angels, we'll see mostly humans causing chaos on the earth, uh, led by demons, and then we'll also see angels fighting against that and leading in the entry of the opening of this scroll for the appointed time. So we have to separate the seals are breaking out a culmination of events. The reading of the scroll is for the appointed time. Um, to actually open the scroll and pour out reality of what is written in it. So the breaking of the seals is not what is written in that scroll, and we have to be very clear on that. And when you open the scroll and you read it, what's taking place is it is pouring out reality of what is written in that scroll. Uh, the seals are a culmination of events that lead to the prophecy of what's written, is ultimately what's taking place here. What we see on this earth during this time, because that's obviously what we're very interested in here, is uh, the result of the spiritual war taking place over the breaking of those seals um, and the reality of what's written in that scroll as God reads it and turns it into reality. So it's, it's really important that we understand those two differences before we get into breaking those seals because what God has ordained to take place is written in the scroll. The war 
trying to prevent that reality from taking place is sealed on those seals. So every time that, that a seal is broken, it's essentially saying, well, here's another thing that happened that I said would happen. Uh, but those events are mostly caused by humans being influenced by demons. Um, and a lot of spiritual, or a lot of heavenly angels then fighting against that. And then, of course, as we read that scroll, then that's what God's prophetic event is aligned to bring about the coming of his kingdom, which is what it's all about anyway. So I hope this helps. Um, we're going to get into next time who is worthy to open that scroll because only, you know, there's only one, one person that can say, okay, I will allow this culmination of events to play out now because it is my appointed time. And we'll take a look at who that is. So um, again, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Love to hear your comments on it. I mean, you probably talked for days about what this scroll is, but I just wanted to make that clear before we move too much further forward in what takes place in the scroll um, because the breaking of the seal are really again it's just the events that are unfolding on earth as demons influence humans to do terrible things and then what's written in the scroll is god's prophetic uh, divine ordained order of the coming of his kingdom so i hope that helps um, love to hear your comments of it. I love reading up on them. I apologize. It's hard to keep up on commenting back, but I do read them all. Thank you for engaging in this with me. Stay on board. It's fascinating stuff about to happen, but definitely leave your comments. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns. Thank you.